Arsenal look like they've gone out of Lisandro Martinez deal and they've chosen to go in and bid for his replacement in there at a side which goes by the names of Benfica where this lad plays from he goes by names of Alejandro Gilmaldo in there for you and that means Tavares is out in this video we are talking Hector Bellerin Gilmaldo we are talking Tavares and we are talking and we are talking Torreira into this video. Maybe a bit of Gabriel Magalhães might come in through later. But all in all, that's what we are focusing on right about now onto this video in here for you. Smash the like button, comment and share. And if at all you are watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to our channel. So as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. If you never knew, this is called Rokani Media Football. And if at all you are watching us for the very first time, please subscribe to us. Because this is the home of your latest news and information in there for you. I told you that we are trying to up our game to see to it that we meet your expectations in there. I would like to be doing five videos on a day long to this channel, but it looks like today I'm going to do four videos. This is the third video. We started with a Sterling Medical undergoing at Cobham in Chelsea, London. Then we went up to the story of Ngolo Kante linked to Chelsea. Now we come into the Arsenal 7 million bid for Alejandro Gilmando. That is a replacement for a man who goes by the names of Lisandro Martinez, who looks like he doesn't want to come to Arsenal and he has really shown them the back and told them, please, let me go to Manchester United. And it looks like he's going to submit in a transfer request immediately, not very many days from now. He has given Ajax an ultimatum of 48 hours and that is because United put in a bid that Ajax really wanted, that 50 million euros. And guess what? They are really trying to snub this and really waiting for more in there for you. All this and more into this story. Rokan David is my name. Let's go eyes in there for you because we have no time to waste. Lots of news are really coming in through and our main job is to come in here and really get you the news as it really flows into the into our news hub in there for you, or our news desks in there for you. Now, today, we have a story coming in from Fred Paxton. Fred Paxton is a sports journalist, supports Arsenal home and away in there for you. Featured at The Guardian, Timesport, 442, Indie Sport, ESPN, and AGA News in there for you. That is the lad that has been reported the story of a man who goes by the name of Hector Bellary. Now, I'm so much baffled about about Hector Bellerin in there for you. A story came in back from Villarreal, USA, saying that Villarreal made a bid for Hector Bellerin that was realistic to what Arsenal wanted. And Hector Bellerin said, if I'm to leave Arsenal, I want to go to, to Rio Betis. That's where he wants to go and is waiting for Rio Betis. Teams like Juventus have shown interest in him and called for Arsenal to go in for for what we call a swap, get us Hector Bellerin, we get you either Arthur Melo or all Albio, is it Rabi or Rabio in there for you? So I'm so much baffled. Now a story is coming in that Hector Bellerin is not pushing the club to terminate his contract. He wants the best for the club and for his career in there for you. So if at all he wants the best for the club and the best for his career, I understand when you say the best for his career. Reason being, the best for his career is playing where his heart feels at home. And where does his heart feel at home? It's Rio Betis in there for you. But if he wants for the best for Arsenal in there for you, he shouldn't really go in for this, this thought of the best for his career. Because if you want the best for Arsenal, Arsenal want to sell you. They no longer want to use you. Has Mikel Arteta convinced him that he's going to stay and use him next season? I doubt. Because he has... Cedric Soares and Tomiyasu into that position. I've not seen Arsenal go into for a right back in there for you. So, right now, as I see things, it looks like Hector Bellerin wants to leave Arsenal and is forcing a move away from Arsenal, obviously permanently, not on loan, because last season they loaned him to Rio Betis, where he was for a full season. He returned. He was the captain for the two games Arsenal has played in the preseason. He captained that closed door game at London Conley against Ipswich where Arsenal beat them by five goals to nil. Nketia scoring a hat trick, Balogan and Lokonga on the score sheet. Then he captained Arsenal again in the first half when Arsenal was beating Nuremberg by five goals to three. Remember, Arsenal conceded two goals in the first half. Gabriel Jesus came on the second half and things turned around and Arsenal won that game by five to three goals. Gabriel Jesus scoring two goals, El Nini and the other two own goals from the players of a side which was by the names of Nuremberg. So he captained both games. Is it a sign that Mikel Arteta really has 
entrusted him to stay at the club and really go ahead to go and do the needful. And secondly, Arsenal is searching for captain. They are searching for captain. Is he really going to go on and really become the captain of Arsenal? Let's wait and see because he's one of the most seniorest players at the club. When you talk about players that have really spent so much time at Arsenal, I think Hector Bellerin is one of them. He was here when Arsene Wenger was here. I think it was the replacement of, is it a Bowie or Sanya? One of those. Because Sanya left for Man City and then he brought in Hector Bellerin. Hector Bellerin is such a good talent, but he never reached his ceiling. He really had great potential in there for you and he had genuine qualities of the game of football, but he never really reached the levels you expected because he was an exciting right back to an extent that even Barcelona wanted to get him back to Barcelona because he's a product of La Masia Academy. So that's what I know about Hector Bellerin. But him not wanting to, to terminate his contract with Arsenal in there for you and he wants the best for the club, there might be a very good talk between him and Mikel Ateita about what we call staying at Arsenal and they might have buried their hatchets and now they might have found a mutual understanding that please can you stay at the club and give me one season or two seasons in there for you because Mikel Ateta finds himself in a position that he really needs more players at Arsenal than never before. Tomiyasu is not a re he was not a reliant player. You can't rely on him after what happened to him. He got an injury in December. We expected him to return in March when he returned he played like two, three games. Then he returned back on injury. So we don't know how he's really going to go on this, but we wait and see how things are really going to go. But that is Hector Bellerin in there for you. Our first story in there for you. And now let's get into this Lucas Torreira. I remember in my first story I did today, I had to mention about Lucas Torreira that his agent, his agent knows that he's being needed by Juventus. But AS Roma is interested in Lucas Torreira and it's rumored that the player has talked to Jose Mourinho and Jose Mourinho has been convinced, has convinced the player to go in and join a side which goes by the name of AS Roma after his good spell on loan at Fiorentina. Now, Giaco Iaco is there for you from Italy he has come out and told us that Juventus are close, are closely following Lucas Torreira. The player is the midfielder prototype manager Maxi Allegri is looking for and Juventus already asked about him back in May. So when you look at Juventus bringing Paul Ebile Pogba, um, they have Rabiot, they have Arthur Melo in the midfield, they have uh, Zakaria, they have uh, which other player in the midfield. So they have close to very many players who play into that position but Lucas Torreira is better than them all especially the work rate he has. No player in that midfield, even if it's Locatelli, no player in that midfield of, of Juventus is like Torreira. His intensity is way up above, above the ordinary. He's so good. He chases, he traces back very well. That is Lucas Torreira. And I really believe that's why they really need him. And in the season, he really held at a side which goes by the names of, at a side which goes by the names of, what's the name? Fiorentina. He scored very many goals. We had a very fantastic season at Fiorentina and that's why they're really dying to get him back at the club immediately right now as they really look for another midfielder in there for you because Juventus have been having a very shameful season and it has never been here in history that in the last 10 years Juventus could take two seasons without winning the Serie A. But for the very first time, last season Inter Milan won the Serie A. Last, sorry, 2020-2021, it was Inter Milan. 2021-2022, it has been SC Milan. So Juventus really want to go ahead and really rebuild their squad. So in in the way, all in the movement to rebuild their squad, Juventus have chosen to go on and bring in Lucas Torreira. So you wait and see the battle of Lucas Torreira, but this really works well for us now because it's leading them into a bidding war between AS Roma and Juventus in there for you. So you wait and see the player that was valued at 9 million pounds, you might find these teams really playing close to 15 million pounds in there for you because Juventus has the money and the only way they can really outcompete AS Roma is by really putting up money that Roma can't really afford. So you wait and see whether a with bidding war will be really, will be really kick-started kick started into this this into this into transfer of Lucas Torreira in there for you. But Juventus are looking closely. There is even another team known as AS Roma looking closely. And it's rumored that the manager of Roma, Jose Mourinho, the special one, has talked to Torreira. He has convinced Torreira. And Torreira is 100% sure 
and okay with the move to a side which goes by the names of AS Roma. That's the story I read earlier. Earlier. That's why I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm shocked because I read earlier that it's all about Torella to AS Roma. Juventus are now in. Max Allegri says, get me that player. Get me that player. I really need to see him with Paul Ebide, Pogba, Lokotedi into that midfield. Then my attacking three should be should be laid by Valhovic in there for you. That's what I really need. His intensity is needed at my club. So let's wait and see how things are really going to go. But he's a unique talent in there for you. Not as in the terms of flair, but the work that he puts up on the field of play in there for you. The distance he covers. You get his intensity is so much needed into that middle field of a side which goes by names of Juventus in there for you. Let's get into the spark of the main stories in there for you. Now, Get French News has come out and told us that Get French Football News has come out and told us that Marseille see Arsenal left back Notavares as a priority transfer target this summer. Marseille president Pablo Longoria is working on a loan deal for the player. It's likely the deal could include an option to buy in there for you. All right, it looks like it's end of days for Notavares at Arsenal, according to what the news is reporting. But to me, I see an exciting left back in him. I mean, it's the mistakes he does. I think he's good. And you don't expect a player who comes in a team like Arsenal that is holding lots of pressures, you get, to go ahead and really be perfect in his past games either for you. There are some games performed very well. There are some games really gave up position and really gave away position that really led to Arsenal conceding goals. But that does not make him a very, a very bad player at Arsenal. I think, to me, Arsenal are looking for a loan, <coughs> according to me. Those stories were that if at all you really want to get a player who goes by names of Notavares, you have to pay 40 million euros, of which I think is worth it because he's young. He's young, 21. He's exciting. And um, and uh, if at all he really gets enough playing time and a good coach, of which I really believe that Mikel Ateta is, but it looks like Mikel Ateta is fed up because he wants a finished product to come in and compete for the league and to play in the Champions League to revive those Arsenal days. He really believes that it might take Notavari some some two years to really get back to the levels that he really wants. So, for my case, I will believe that going to Marseille would be a very good move because Marseille has really babysitted, babysitted, babysitted uh, William Saliba, and they've seen get and they've seen him get back, and they've seen get him get himself back to the levels you are or they expected to be in there for you. That's why he's returning at Arsenal, and Arsenal saying we are not selling you. That is William Saliba, and he's going to join Arsenal tomorrow as they travel to side which goes by names of America. That is William Saliba, and I think it will be a good move for Tavares because that means there is a very good bond between Arsenal or relationship between Arsenal and Marseille. So let's see what happens out of that deal. But I'm hundred percent sure Arsenal won't sell him. They won't put out a buy option because they know that Kian Tierney is not reliable. And secondly, a team might come in to go in for Kian Tierney. I read last season before it really came to an end towards March that <coughs> that Real Madrid was seeing. Kian Tierney as a replacement for Marcelo. Very many top clubs will be looking for left backs in the world, and you never know. They might come out and convince a player who goes by the names of Kian Tierney to leave. So Arsenal are preparing for that situation. If you bring in Grimaldo, you're going to talk about, then you have to go ahead and really get in Tavares after like one or two years. So we wait and see what really happens about no Tavares. But it looks like he's going to be out of Arsenal and don't expect him to be part of the deal in there for you. So let's talk a man known as Alejandro Grimado, the left back plays for Benfica. He's really good. He's intelligent. He's decisive. I like the way he defend. Going forward, he has a perfect cross on him. So he has gained qualities and his potential is really so much high. Being 27, he's experienced. And when such a moment comes in, a chance comes in at the age of 27, you've been playing in Benfica for all of those years. You can't return it down. Guess what? Arsenal have gone in all for the left back, the Spanish left back who plays for Benfica, who is left with just one year on his contract. And they've submitted an offer of 7 million euros. It's realistic to what the club values this player in. That's it. And Arsenal has gone in all to get in a left back in their field as they are really 
not ready to go on and really wait for what Ajax will decide for the player who goes by names of Lisandro Martinez in there for you. And they've said they are set to intensify negotiations over the coming weeks. That is Arsenal in there for you. So, before we go any further, allow me bring you this lad who goes by names of Lisandro onto your screen such that you know him and what he is and what his stats really read in here onto the Rokani Media Football. This is Alex Grimaldo. All right. <coughs> Sorry about that. He's 26 years of age. In September, he's making 27. This is the lad that Arsenal is really looking at as we speak right about now. So I'm trying to really get it on your screen and you're really going to see his stats. Something that you all might want to see in there for you. So when you look at that on your screen, that is the guy. <laughs> that is the guy. So, he has played for Benfica for all of those years from 20, I think, 16 in there for you. That is Lisandro in there for you. And he played 14 games in the Champions League. You get 14 games in the Champions League. Last season, he played 14, zero goals and two yellow cards. In their league, that is the Premier League of a side which goes by the names of Portugal. He played 29 games, five goals, Five assists. That's not bad for left back. That's not bad for left back, guys. In ten, in twenty nine games, he was involved in ten goals. That's a very good output for left back. And if at all he comes in in the Premier League and really masters the art like that, he will go on and do the need for now. There is something amazing last season, the previous season of 2020, 2021. He played thirty one games. He played. He scored two goals and nine, and nine and nine assists. There is a season of 2019, 2018-2019, 34 games. This is the season I'm talking about. This is the season. 34 games, 4 goals, 12 assists, 16 goal involvements. <laughs> oh my God. I think Arsenal are really getting themselves a very good player. He's really good, according to me. And if Atori is coming in to deputize a player who goes by names of... A player who goes by the names of... A player who goes by the names of... A player who goes by the names of uh, Kientieni. That's not a bad replacement in there. That's not a bad second option for Arsenal because he comes in with loads of things in there for you that some people cannot really come in here to really go on and really give us in there for you. Let's go into this guy and let's dig, let's let's dig let's dig more into this guy because we need to know a lot about this guy and you guys will really get to know that Arsenal are really getting themselves a very good player and. I'm giving the reason as to why Arsenal have really gone on to really get in this player and really get him all what he's really wanting as a player. This is the scouting site. It's known as Favrev. Stats per 90. On your screen. There you go. So, <laughs> they are telling us that non-penalty goals, zero. Then, shots, shots total, 15. Is 0 0.3, that is 15 per cent in there for you. Then assists, 0 0.3 per 90. You get that is 97 per cent. Um, assists, yeah, that's it. Then we go to short creating actions, 2.0968 per cent. Passes attempted, 42.9 per 90. That is per game. That is 14 per cent. Pass completion is at 41, at 40. He's at 75.6 per cent in there for you then we are having progressive passes he's having 17 uh, progressive carries 3.3 that is 31 percent then we are having progressive dribbles completed 1.5 per 90 in there for you making it a 77 percent progressive carries 3.3.66 in there for you then pressure at pressures 13.7 uh, tackles 2.1 interceptions in there for you and blocks at 68 percent clearance is at 1.67 in there for you so i will believe that he's really a very good player that arsenal will go in and like you arsenal, arsenal fans all over the world this is the lad you should really go in and get in one <laughs> when you look at what is happening at arsenal right now it's different altogether we don't know when lisandro martin is to manchester united will come up to a level of maturing we really don't know reason is let me show you this tweet. It came in from Alex Crook in here for you. 
he works for Talksport, and it looks like this is the reason as to why Arsenal has really pulled out of the deal of Lisandro Martinez, and they've said let's go in and bring in Lisandro, let's go in and bring in Glimaldo. One, this is Alex Crook. Either for you, he's a talk, he's a talk, he's a talk sport football correspondent, commentator, presenter, and news journalist. Either for you, he has said Man United have bid 50 million euros for Lisandro Martinez. They are yet to be told if it's been accepted or rejected because I think Ajax are waiting to see if Arsenal can match it. I'm not sure they will because Lisandro has his height on a move to United. Now, the reason as to why Arsenal is really pulling out of this deal of Lisandro Martinez is United has made the realistic evaluation of Lisandro Martinez of Ajax to Ajax. What Ajax are waiting for, they've not yet replied Manchester United and they're waiting for United to come in here and retell them what they're all about. You get? They're waiting for Arsenal also to come in and say, all right, we want the player. So Arsenal doesn't want this. That's why Fabricio came out and said that Arsenal is looking for very many options, but they are keeping their, their transfers silent. The moment they go in for a player, someone will come in and really, and really hijack the deal in there for you like United did for Lisandro Martinez. So they don't want... They don't want. Chelsea had hijacked the deal of Rafinha. You know that very well. Until the player said, I want to go to Barcelona in there for you. So, Arsenal are really so much crucial and so much, so much, so much, so much careful on the deals they are making. Now, when you look at the deal of Lisandro Martinez, it was good for Arsenal reason. Two in one. He could play as a left back and a central defender. So, he could be a replacement for Gabio Magales and Kian Hieni. But now Arsenal is going in for Grimaldo, only a replacement or a player to deputize, a player who goes by the names of KNT. And now, who is really going to replace Gabriel Magalis when he really gets an injury? He has shown that he can play close to 34 games a season, but expect, expect, expect him to be out for like two or three weeks. So if at all he's out for the month at Arsenal, who do you bring in? Because you are left with William Saliba, Ben White and uh, Rob Holding. None of those players is like Magales. Magales is strong. He's fast, good in the air, good on the ball. So Arsenal needed a, def a defender to come in and do that. And secondly, when you look at coaches like Mikel Ateta, they 100% believe that you should be having a left-footed side defender playing on the left side of the central defense. That's what they believe in. So the reason as to why Mikel Arteta was dying to get in Martinez, it was because he was a proven left-footed central defender who could play in the midfield and play onto the left side of the fullback. You get? So I'm asking myself, how are Arsenal really looking at this? Are they really ready to go into a season without another serious defender, central defender especially? Because the central defender is needed at Arsenal. When Magales gets injured, even if you're bringing Saliba, Saliba is not... A Magales. Arsenal needs another def central defender to come in and do the needful in there for you. So that's what I had for you here onto this channel. Smash the like button, comment, and share. And if at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to go into the lower right bottom corner, smash the subscription button for smashing it, hit the notification bell, and tell us where you're watching us from in there for you. Thank you for the love. I really love you too in there for you. I reciprocate the love as you do the same to me. So thank you for loving me. Uh, guys, I'm really loving your I'm really loving the way you really get back to me, the feedback, the comments. When I get some time, I really reply some of them in there for you because there are so many. But smash that like button in there for you as Arsenal makes a 7 million euro bid for Alejandro Grimaldo, that left back for Benfica, who is left with just one year on his contract. And Benfica won't really want to lose him out on a free. They have to sell him to Arsenal. And you never know, by the beginning of this week, Arsenal might really get in another Deep, another player in there for you, adding him on Marquinhos, Matt Turner, Fabio Vieira, and Gabio Jesus to make them five players. Remember, Mikel Ateta asked for seven players at Arsenal in there for you. So, tell me what you think about Torreira to Juventus. There is a battle between Roma and Juventus. They really want this player. Hector Bellerin says that he really wants to really do the best for the club in there for you. Have they really agreed with Mikel Ateta and buried their hatchets? that he's really going to stay at Arsenal. Over to you in there for you. And lastly, not have a race on a loan to Olympic Marseille. But it's said a buyout clause, Arsenal 
is expected to put it in into the contract in there for you. So would you like Arsenal to sell Nuno Tavares? That's another story for you to come in here and react about onto this channel, which goes by names of Rokani Media Football. I sign out for now. See you later, guys. And may the Almighty God protect you abundantly. Happy week in there for you because today is a Sunday and tomorrow is a Monday. We are kicking starting off the new week, especially with what we expect to be so good. Arsenal is going to be in Florida. We expect them to play on Sunday. That is the 17th. They're going to play with Everton in America and we are here to bring you the footage in here when Arsenal is in America. I'm out.